Washington, that's a complete team. No one just gets a lot given to them in the Husky program. Sam Bray, no doubt about it. One play by Strickland, and Sam explodes. Yeah, hey, sir. Tournament. The Hawaii Wahine have come across the Pacific to face the third seed, Washington Huskies. The Huskies are the top seed in the Seattle Regional. The winner of this match will play the winner of the Utah-Nebraska match. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Anne-Marie Anderson alongside 21-time national championship coach Al Skates. And now an interesting matchup between these two teams. How do you think they match up against each other? Well, Washington is the best serving team in the country, one of the best. And I think they're gonna have, uh, Hawaii's gonna have trouble going to the middle where their strength is. And even if they do, Hawaii will be all bunched up in the middle waiting for them. So it'll be interesting. If they can pass, they have a chance. Yeah, one of the keys for Hawaii, of course, is going to be trying to contain Washington superstar Chris Ansant. Yeah, she was named Player of the Year twice in a row now. She's the only Husky to be named twice in a row. She broke the record for most Pac-12 Player of the, of the Week awards with 10 this year. She was named AFCA Player of the Year, National Player of the Year for the... Oh, maybe the second time her career coming down the pike here. The 2013 season also saw her name the Honda Award winner. She does everything, six-tool player. Meanwhile, for Hawaii, they have had a great year out of Olivia McGill in their middle. Yeah, Olivia McGill was a very good middle attacker in the Pac-12 at the University of Arizona. Then she switched, and now she's the leading hitter and blocker in the Big West Conference. And she's ranked 10th nationally in hitting. She's hitting 421. She gets 2.76 kills a, a set. And, and they're going to really try to stop her. She'll really be dusted tonight. This is the third time in the last five years that Hawaii and Washington have met in the second round. The Huskies won the first two times as Hawaii trying to upset Washington on their home floor today. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena, Hawaii, and Washington about to get underway. We'll give you a quick look at the lineups brought to you by Tashikara. Pretty much lineups that both of these teams have been going through this, going with this season. Al, except for Washington, is starting Courtney Schwan on the outside. Chrissy Jones out right now. Yeah, she sprained her ankle on November 21st. She played a little bit in the third set last night. Looked pretty good, actually. They may use her again later. She available. Scambray takes the first swing. And a little help for Khalid Greeley off the net. Wide attack from Sean Point Wahine. Well, a few more like that. We'll be seeing Chris Jones earlier than expected. But Swan came in and played great when Chrissy went down. And she's very good. The competition was very close between these two players early on. Taylor Higgins, a sophomore from Honolulu, serves. Tough serve at Strickland. Big block. Scambers is touched and one up from Mendoza. Olivao covers her own block. Tight set and a net violation on the Huskies. Well, I was talking to Dave Soji early today, and the, the key he felt was matchups. He wants to get a big opposite Nikki Taylor on Krista Van Sant, and it's not going to happen because Krista's in the middle back, and Nikki Taylor's in the left front. Higgins bombs another serve. No. Manuel Leval takes a swing. Solid defense from Manuel Val. Misconnect with Olivia McGill. And Sambrain's taking a lot of swings early. 
She sure has. Usually Chris is up there a little sooner than this, but uh, Kristen can still hit out of the back. They haven't set her out of the back yet. But at the end of the match, I'll tell you right now, she's going to have twice as many sets as any of her teammates. Probably twice as many kills. Krista Van Zandt is poised to become the all-time kill leader for Washington with four kills today. Meanwhile, Jade Finau in set and serve in the 6-2 offense for Washington. Jade had her first start last night. First start of the season. Yeah, as a freshman, the first start of her career, she did that because Katie Beal suffered an ACL injury in the last match of the regular season. She is out for the year, so Finau is going to be helping a 6-2. And Finau showed her she was a great digger last night. Really has a nose with the ball. And she'll get as close as necessary. If there's no block, she'll get up there eight feet away and still dig ball. Got a little help from the equipment on the serve. Nikki Taylor turns a little too wide. I thought Finau was really co uh, connecting well with Nelson. A great front court player, number six, who's in the left front right now for Washington. There's Katie Beals sitting on the sidelines, gold knee brace on. Sad to see her with an ACL injury. Big smack down, but just a little wide time, Manuel Leval. Well, that was close, but not close enough. Yeah, Katie Beal will be watching. It was the playoffs from that bench right there. Perfect pass. And it's up. Free ball to Hawaii. McGill is up. Set is low, Al. Boy, that is tentative. That set barely got above her armpit. I don't know how she kept that one in play. McGill did a great job. Nice pancake by the off blocker. Got the ball up and kept her alive. Ty Manuel Leval back to serve. First team all Big West. Perfect serve and way right out the middle. They had two blockers up with her too. She usually only sees one blocker. Her outside ears are so good. She used the block to her advantage on that one. T. Scambre back to serve for Washington. They go to Manu Oleval, who until this year had, or until her Hawaii career, had never played in a six-rotation position before. Well, last night she had three reception errors against Duke. And I'm sure they saw that, and they're targeting her. She's getting a lot of uh, passes right now. I think they'll go right down the line at her again. The Libero's given her plenty of space. She's passing the third court. They hit her again. That one's pretty good. Pass from her. Turned again down the line. Just a little too wide by Clay Greeley. Clay Greeley was out of the match last night against Duke after three swings. She turned her ankle. She looked okay in practice today. I watched her for about an hour. And she didn't show any signs of a sprain. Yeah, she's been playing very well lately. Five double-doubles in the four matches prior to last night's match for Clay Greeley. Really finished the season strong for the Wahine. Yeah, they need her in there. Sarah Mendoza, the senior from Santa Barbara, libero for Hawaii, back to serve. Finau, back to Nelson. And there you see Clay Greeley take a swing. It's wide. Well, two errors. Not looking good. Last night, Ginger Long came in number one. Ginger Long, 5'11", junior, played pretty good out of Kamehameha Schools in Maui. Perk pass, there's the mill, and it binds the back line. Oh. Adolfo, the kill. <laughs> Nikki Taylor serving. Strickland puts that up. Finau goes outside and fan slam. Wow. That, you see the off blocker needs to get to straddle a three meter line.
chance to get deeper. Van Zandt loves that scene between the off blocker and left back. Jim McLaughlin, the head coach of the Huskies program in his 14th season. He loves the numbers, runs them every which way, and will break a team down. Jim's the only coach to win a men's NCAA championship. He won SC in 1990 and a women's NCAA championship at Washington 2005, I believe. Beautiful up from Higgins to keep it alive. And another great dig. This is outside. Beautiful set by Big Ray. block, and it was on the line. Kalea Adolfo gets her hands all over it. Yeah, Hawaii can block, that's for sure. They're getting all the best players from Hawaii to stay in Hawaii. And they have a good team every year. And if I, if I recall in all your 50-year career, you had a lot of players come from Hawaii to play for you. Yeah, I started out with Scott Rose and Peter Ehrman in the fall of 77. And we won 11 straight NCAA championships with one Hawaiian on the team every year. Liana Sabell crushes from the middle for Washington. In fact, one of the guys I used to coach against was Dave Sh Soji. He started the men's program over there back in 78 to 85. Kalei Adolfo having some energy for Soji's program. And as she rotates out after a big kill, Hawaii trailing by three. Well, they've made six hitting errors and only four kills. That's that's a problem right now. They're not getting enough kills. They're still close. It's only seven to ten. Here's a look at Dave Shoji, 40th season as the Wahine's head coach, the winningest coach in NCAA Division One women's volleyball. He passed up Andy Banikowski this year, the retired coach at UCLA. Still battling it out with Russ Rose, who's right behind him. Right. <laughs> and there again, you see the Wahine block controlling that net. Boy, you got to hit high flat against that block. There was no seam for her to hit. She's, she goes low seam here, and there is no low seam. Well, now you know. Yeah. Right. Now, now both, you know. Both teams are really good blocking teams. Cassie Strickland unloads her first serve of the day. I saw Scott Wong bringing the serve against the Wahinis today in practice. He's in his early 30s, but he can still hit a jump serve really hard. Bailey Tanner moves her hitters out of the way. Scott is the associate head coach for the Wahinis. Longest rally we've seen today from the backcourt. A kill for Krista Van Zandt. See, that's the perfect set for her. That's about seven feet off the net, so she can broad jump into that. She hits it just like a full court set. And now Cassie Strickland will be back again to serve. If Cassie tosses the ball in front of the line, she really hits it hard. And that was hit pretty hard. Handled fairly well as well. Manuole Val. Her change of speed. Uh-oh. Schwan. Gets good swing. Known. That was a tough swing for her. That was a low inside set. She had great body control. Timeout, Wahinis. And that was a huge kill for Schwan. As not only does she get a Huskies point, but when we come back, Cassie Strickland will again be on the back line serving. Welcome back, set number one of the second round of the NCAA tournament. Hawaii playing the third seed Washington on their home floor. Cassie Strickland is behind the service line for Washington. The toughest server, maybe in the nation, one of the toughest for sure. One of the toughest, yeah. one of the toughest. If she tosses in front of the end line, she can serve over 50, 50 miles an hour. Depends on her toss, that's too deep. That was a terrible toss. She hit the ball about six feet behind the end line. She's just got to hit it like 80% with a lot of top spin to keep that one in play. And so that was a good timeout then by Dave Shady. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. He's called plenty of good timeouts in his career. His 40-year career. The middle. Melanie Wade goes off the hands. A good attempt 
by Mendoza at a pancake, but no good. That is so hard to make a pancake go back when he's going at a 45 degree angle to the net. You need the, you need the left hand. You need the left hand to put this. Just swing into the court, bring it back. That was an awful tough ball in there. Hawaii, as you mentioned, hitting errors early oh, on put them in a hole. hitting errors, only two blocks. Yeah, and yet they're playing very well now. Now it's up to seven hitting errors. Tough, tough set. Outside. Scambre, dug by Mendoza. Okay, that's eight errors. Now six of them are enforced errors. Washington's block two. That ratio should be one to one. No higher than one to one. So that's killing them right now. They've got to challenge the block. They can't be afraid of it. Because the rest of their game for Hawaii looking pretty good. We've talked about their ball control. They're passing all right. There's a service error. And it leaves the door open a crack again. Yeah, they've just got to hit the court. And if they get blocked, they have to cover. Savannah Kahakai coming in to serve now. As Manuel Eval takes a break. Ace. And an ace for Kahakai. Nazi Malta, the referee, calling that ball down. She's a great ref. She used to ref at a volleyball kiss. When I had Karch Karai, Sinjin Smith, Ricky Liddy's, Rick Sam was about six Olympians. And they used to chew on her if she did something wrong. She <laughs> learned to ref well very quickly. We have about 20 players go all over the country. And she got to ref the staff matches. Back set off the top of the blockers. Finau goes all the way back. And Wade and Nelson shut it down for the Huskies. Yeah, that, when the block's solid, you need to hit it high and flat into the block, then it comes back easy. When you hit that low hard one, nobody can cover. They haven't seen a block like this. Washington, one of the top blocking teams in the nation. That was a beautiful set, and that was a good swing. Free ball to Lahine. They want to run that middle. They go to McGill. Washington was bunched in there. Nelson was right in the middle. Good dig. Kahakai with a great one-handed dig. Now back to Nelson. That's the way they like it at Washington. What another great dig. The defense of Wahine wins the rally. That's right, they're digging some balls. They're groveling, they're coming up with it. They just need their hitters to hit the ball in the court. And when the block is solid, they need their hitters to hit it high and flat so they can get another chance. Adolfo comes back in up front for the Wahine. Oh no. She was and in the right spot. And hit her foot. foot. That's her spot. Free ball, not a perfect pass. They can't run the middle. But love the craftiness from Greeley, but that dig was out of this world. Yeah, you know what? I'm telling you, if you get to that spot, look at that stance. <laughs> Wide stance, got it. There's an off-speed shot going down. Mendoza off of her foot. It was incredible. Yeah, any part of the body is in play. Hawaii back within four. But as the rules evolve, we're getting more and more rallies. It used to be in the old days, below the waist was dead. Right. So you couldn't hit the ball, couldn't hit, the, hit you below the waist. There used to be a lot of stupid rules, which they're gradually getting rid of. The remaining stupid rule in women's volleyball is the net rule. Because nets are called in the middle of the net, the bottom of the net, in places where it doesn't affect the play at all. The world rule is only the top of the net is called. And that extends the rounds even more. We've had several nets already. So that'll be the next rule change, hopefully. Because it's so much fun to watch these women dig all these balls. It's terrific. Uh, some great defense happening here tonight in women's volleyball. And Hawaii trailing by just three. They've kind of overcome those early errors. It's an excellent defense. I'm telling you, right now, they're still hitting minus. They've had nine errors and six kills, and they're in the game. They're holding Washington to 114. Washington hits over 300. 
So they're really keeping Washington down. That, they're doing a great job on defense. Now they need some offense. Washington hits 316 for the season. You know, that is huge. And they're doing a job on it. Yeah, and for Olivia McGill in the middle, who has been such a, a big hitter for them all year, not passing enough to get McGill all those. That she's got just one kill so far today. That's right. I said in the open, that this will be the toughest team that I've seen serving. And, and they just haven't been able to get it to their middles thus far. Sarah Mendoza back to serve. Strickland, Scambay, and Van Zant, the primary passers for the Huskies. Goes at the freshman, Scambray. Great second effort by Calais Adolfo. Yes, beautiful. We welcome those of you who have just been watching men's soccer as UCLA advancing at the final spot in the final four. As we are at Alaska Airlines Arena, second round NCAA volleyball. Chris Van Zant, one kill away from becoming Washington's all-time kills leader. Yeah, she's hit some really great angles so far tonight. She's only had a few swings so far. They started her in the back of the court to get rid of the great blocker, the great opposite, Mickey Taylor, who's blocking over one ball per set, one block per set, and they don't want to see that matchup. They're serving Scambray, the freshman. Kaylee Nelson smothers that one. Yeah, Kaylee has really had a hitting night last night. They crushed their first round opponent, and she was a big part of that. She's going to hit hard. The block has to get over quick. They have to be over before she hits her. It's the only way to stop her. Bailey Tanner comes in. There's Kelly Nelson talking with Les Gabriel, one of the assistants. Perfect pass. Slide travels all the way across court, and it works. Kalea Dolfo is going to really have a night. Four kills. Yeah, she's going to have to sprint to the outside like she did in that route to get away from the middle blocker. And she was going as fast as she could. It was a nice set all the way to pin. They're making Scambray pass every ball. Van Zant, meanwhile, is now the Washington career kills record holder. Two-time Pac-12 player of the year. First Husky to be named two times in a row. She has just passed Crystal Morrison for all-time kills. And she has been so consistent over her career. Olivia McGill comes back in, transferred from Arizona for this season, leading blocker in the pack, I mean the Big West, and leading hitter. High efficiency. Scamry again, passing the ball. He's doing a nice job of it, too. Strickland makes a dig. They're covering that block. Outside, Manuole Val finds the block of her own in front of her. And it's Sabellin who puts it down. Sabellin will beat one blocker every time. She gets a slow set. It's not a real fast set. He can turn it. Crossbody or wrist away. So if there's only one blocker there, she's not going to hit the block. She's having a good season. She's hitting 399. <laughs> Crushing serve from Strickland is handled perfectly by Hawaii, and they convert it into a kill. That ball is hit flat into the block. That's what you do when there's a solid block. Good swing. Hawaii has overcome those early errors. They're now hitting positive numbers for the first time in the set. That's right. They're up to 0-24. They had a bunch of hitting errors early on. They got blocked a few times and started hitting some balls out. Scambray works it off the block. See, that's a smart job. High flat out the middle blocker. It's going to go beyond the line. 
Finau had her first start last night, and she's back at the service line. An injury to the starting setter, Katie Beals, who's on the sideline. Tell us what you think of this match with the hashtag H-A-W-V-S-U-W, Hawaii versus UW. Join us on Twitter during the conversation and tell us what you think of this matchup because it's going to be a great one. I think we're going to be here for a while, and because of the defense. Yeah, both teams are digging well. Nikki Taylor hitting one out. Hawaii's hitting zero. They've got to challenge the block. They've only had two balls blocked, and they've had ten hitting errors, so for three balls blocked. So they've hit seven out, and they've only had three blocked. That's got to be one to one. One to one. And they'd be tied or ahead right now if that was the case. Washington has had an excellent year in Pac-12. They have another 30-win season for the second consecutive year. Here's some of their milestones. Yeah, I saw, I saw beat Stanford after they lost two in the in mountains to Utah and Colorado. They came back and beat undefeated Stanford. And uh, I was here calling that match. They looked great against Stanford. It's their 13th consecutive NCAA appearance, and Hawaii has come to Seattle region three times in the last five years and faced Washington and Al. They've come up short the last two times, but today, what can the Wahine do to set them apart and get the win? Well, right now, they have to quit hitting the ball out of bounds. They have to challenge the block. And when the block is solid, they have to hit it high so it comes back and the, their players get a chance to cover. And right now, they're trying to hit shots they don't have. They see the big block. They're trying to avoid the block and create shots they haven't used all season. Real the sharp angles. The winner of this match between Hawaii and Washington is going to face Nebraska as Nebraska eked out Utah in a five-set battle. Now Utah was down 0-2. Came all the way back, forced it to five sets. Nebraska was a big favorite in that match, too. Yeah, Oregon State, meanwhile, has advanced to Sweet 16. Terry Laskevich, the Pac-12 Coach of the Year, proving that the voters were absolutely right. Well, he didn't win a match last year, and this year he won a bunch in the Pac-12. So. Yeah, what a difference a year makes. And recruiting. He, he yes. recruited well. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Hawaii... First in the Big West in blocks per set, fifth in the nation, but they did not win the Big West this year or even a share of the title for the first time, I think, 15 years, as Long Beach did that. Outside. Nelson just puts it down. Yeah, that was a real nice jam there. And she didn't throw it. She got it right in front of her. Years ago, that would have been called a throw. The good pass, and crushed from the right side by Nikki Taylor. They're right in this now. Now they need a point on the serve. 2023. They need to get a streak going. Let's go for two. Dave shows you telling us he put the offense around Nikki Taylor before the season. She hurt her elbow, missed much of the beginning of the year, and as a result, it put the Hawaii back a bit. Now it is set point. Washington. Nelson hits that late blocker and it goes down. She hits hard at the late blocker. Melanie Wade served 15 consecutive points yesterday against New Hampshire. Finau to Van Zandt. And a kill off the block as it's lost. First set goes to Washington. Yeah, that's too, too bad. Blocker had a chance to play that ball, but she didn't know where it was. The teammates need to yell up, up, up. Hawaii fought back from a lot of errors to make it much tougher at the end. What adjustments will the Wahine make for set number two? There was some excellent defense in this well. first set. This packed Boom. <laughs> NCAA Tournament Volleyball is presented by Tashikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. A tough first match as Hawaii overcame some early hitting errors with strong defense to challenge Washington, but in the end, it was the lock of Washington that kept things quiet. 
Well, Washington allowed Hawaii to stay in the game because they made four service errors. But Van San has been on fire. She has five kills and nine swings with no errors. She's hitting the ball very hard. They've dug four of them, and they've made fantastic digs to do so. But she's putting a lot of heat on the ball. That ball put it could have been dug, too. But it's so tough for the blocker. They turn and try to chase it down. They don't know it's on top of their head. But she's off to a good start, hitting 556. No errors, nine swings. Yeah, and as the uh, all-time career kill leader for Washington with 1,860, you take a look at the numbers uh, from the first set, and it tells the story. Yeah, three blocks by Washington and seven hitting errors by Hawaii and two blocks. That's a total of 10 errors. Cassie Strickland starts things off serving and ends up with a service error in the net. Okay, let's see if he gets his matchup this time. Uh, Dave Soji would love to see Higgins on Van Sant. A pass. And Van Sant starting in the back again. You dig, it's chased down. Oh, that effort is crushing. So Belden chased it down and then Nobody followed her. Sorry, it wasn't Sabeldon, but chased down and then followed. Tanner chased it. Well, so far, Vincent has not seen Nikki Taylor blocking her. She's starting in the back instead of the front and staying away from her. Nikki Taylor's one of the best in blockers in the country for Hawaii. Strickland puts that up perfectly. Scambray trying to put it down, but Mendoza's not having it. Just Ball down. is long. But hitting there just keep mounting. So Hawaii is hitting less than zero right now because of all the hitting there is. They're doing other things well, but just got to hit the ball in the court. Yeah, 11 errors so far. Attack errors. And that'll do it. Meanwhile, a couple of consecutive service errors for Washington. I've never seen them. Washington serve so many errors before. Yeah. That is amazing. This is their home court. There's six errors already for yeah. the first set into this, this team one. doesn't do that. Nice set by for now. Good bump set running forward. Kaylee Nelson takes swing, high off hands. Miguel. Olivia Miguel waits for Finally it. Finally gets an opportunity. They need to feed Miguel. Look at that. She hits it on way down, way after the apex of her jump. Good body control. And Olivia, it helps to have long arms. Olivia Miguel's father saw her play for the first time this season last night oh my. against Duke. He and her club coach were here. She's from Shoreline, Washington. So has some fans here for her. Huskies are down. Take the time out here. Five to one. And so as Jim McLaughlin talked to his team, they show his team up by four early in set number two. Lorenzo Romo. Welcome back, Hawaii. Up by four over the Huskies. And last night, Hawaii overdue in three in decisive fashion. Yeah, they played well. Duke was a highly respected team, and they they pretty much got dominated by Hawaii. What's happening here for Washington is Courtney Swan, the substitute who just played the last four matches, is hitting minus on 11. She only has one kill, two errors, and nine swings. So we might see a substitution, I would say, after the 10-minute break. And Chrissy Jones, the star who tweaked rank on November 21st, will probably come in after she gets to run around for 10 minutes during break. Right, and that's what Jim Laughlin did last night as well, to test her out a middle. Meanwhile, a use of that block and a point for Washington. The name of the game for set number two is going to be reducing the errors. Big block, Wilson and Wade. Yeah, you don't hit low hard into that block. It's just... Uh, they get so tight. There's no seam. There's no low seam. Great block. Scambray serves. 
They're repeating. And a big kill on the other side for Calais Greeley. I like the way she repeats when somebody gets stuffed. She uh, goes right back to her. That's nice. There's Jade Fee now. So Washington always has three hitters in the front court at all times. Princeton Van Zandt, who has a swing so far than two of her teammates, kind of a surprise. Nice transition to McGill. She got up really fast. Big dig, sent back. Strickland digs it back to Van Zandt, Van trying Zandt. to find a spot. A little early on that one. Begging for it, looking for Van Slam, but it goes back to Nelson. Go middle. Yes. And it's a crush to Lea Adolfo. I saw that being set up. I'll tell you, what a great play that was. Look how fast. That's a two-step approach. That mill got off so fast. Great transition. Adolfo had about 150 family and friends at senior night last week against UC Davis. A well-loved player for the Wahine. Yeah. They love volleyball in the islands. There's so many great players over there. Wade serves. Melly Wade is, back to serve. Problem is the men are all going to play for Stanford and UCLA and all the teams in the mainland. And there's some great ones. Including two day shows you saw. Well, make it Christensen who came out of Punahou High School. No, Bayamea High School where one of my guys, Arnie Lambert, came out of. He he is a the, the starting center for the USA men's national team. And he's a senior at USC. I mean, he gave up. He'd be making high six figures right now. Yeah. And Hawaii, meanwhile, celebrating the big block as they are up by five. They are really turning this around. The, the block. first set, they hit, my, they hit 0 4 3. They're hitting 1 8 2. And they're going for it on the serve. Yeah, they, they're going to try different people, and if somebody gets in the group, they'll try somebody else. Everybody's going to get a shot tonight. They started off on, uh, on Tia Scambrick. And, and now they've brought in Chrissy Jones. Washington has 28 okay. white right there against the block, and it's another kill for Hawaii. So Chris Jones came in. She didn't wait for that warm-up period. She looked good yesterday. She played in the third set. She's in the left front, so she got three trips, rotations across the front, and then she'll go out, and Setter will come in and serve. We remind you, she missed four matches towards the end of the season for Washington, and she's going to take a swing from well off the net. Yeah, that was in the 10-foot line. And a big block the other side, though. Spelden and Van Zant shut it down. That's a nasty block over there. They're just, <laughs> you can see the forearms over the net from that side view. Van Zant serving. Chrissy Jones going to be on this block. Big dig from Van Zant. She's what a complete player she is. Yeah, all the tools. Middle, the other way, Adolfo. But Zant's going to have to chase it down, and she does. Free ball, Wahine. Dump, so smart. Yeah, that was, all the hands were down on blockers. And uh, Taylor Higgins just dumps it into the block. She's hitting 348 on those attacks. She only gets half a kill a set. She picks spots. Good spot by Taylor Higgins that time. Tatiana Ponce serves. So Bogan crushes. Yeah, one blocker, the left side blocker was trying to get there to help. She didn't make it. I like McGill. She took a little space that time. She made a little move into the rest of the way spot. That's the thing. You've got to guess where she's going to hit. Cassie Strickland back to serve again. She missed her first serve of this set. Terrible toss. About eight feet behind the end line that time. I'll tell you, her tosses the last two nights have been really erratic. Sometimes they're perfect, and then she drills it about 50 miles an hour. Per by perfect, I mean two feet inside the inline. Other times are like that, about eight feet off the net. Yeah, three errors, no aces yet today. And I say yet, yeah, because it can happen. He gets on a roll. Nice hit by Miguel, Doug. Scamry. 
Beautiful and sent set. back. What an awesome set, but a great dig by Strickland. Mendoza one-handed pumps it up. And beautiful, hot off the block, Clay Greeley. That's what I'm talking about. Really, they didn't know if she'd start because they yanked her after three hits. Last night, she tweaked her ankle, but, uh, and she started slower. First two swings tonight, she made hitting errors, which is coming around. Hawaii up by six. Ace. And a service ace from Mendoza. Or, sorry, from Higgins. Yeah, they can serve. Hawaii can serve, too. Two good serve teams here tonight. I'm out Washington. Beautiful corner serve there in Hawaii now has built a significant lead out. What's been the difference for them this set? Well, they're, this time they're not making as many hitting errors. They're challenging the block. And they're having some good results. They're hitting above 200. Compare that to 043 in the first set. So once you get rid of those errors, they've only made two errors the second set. They made 11 the first set. So. They're hitting just as good as Washington. They're hitting better than Washington this set. Well, if you're a Husky sports fan, then next Sunday you can watch the Husky men play basketball as they host Eastern Washington 5 p.m. Pacific time on Pac-12 Networks. That'll be a lot of fun. Meanwhile, the women's basketball team for the Huskies again looking very strong. Yeah, a lot of purple here. Against Stanford, there were 8,600 people here for a regular season match. I don't know what the house is tonight, but there's a lot of them here tonight. And these two programs, two story programs in NCAA history, and taking a look at their season comparisons, you get an idea of how they match up a bit. Well, the team that hits with the highest average tonight is going to win. If you go out the season, 72 points higher hitting efficiency by Washington. But that changes from set to set. So right now, why is hitting better? And they're yeah. winning this set. Yeah, Hawaii hitting in this set 2 11 to Washington's 1 11. One thing about this tonight Hawaii's sixth in the nation in blocking, and, Ho and Washington is 10th. So they're both going to hit below their season average. Yeah, there you go. Taylor Higgins continues to serve. She got an ace before the break. Chrissy Jones takes a big swing this time. Gambre, still with more swings than anybody else, picks up another kill. See, that's the kind of swing you need to take against a, a block that's there. High flat into the hands. He wasn't penetrating, and her hands got knocked back. They're not so interested in Van Zandt as much yet as we've seen other times. Well, she's got 18 swings. She's starting in the middle back, and when they really want to set her, she'll start in the left foot. Oh, there you go. She hasn't been getting set in the backcourt as much as we've seen in no, other times, No, right? she has not. And, and, but you know what? At the end of the set, or the end of the match, she's going to get straight. And I think she's going to get a lot of sets. Anything, if, if it's tight, it's going to be the Krista Van Sant show. Meanwhile, Hawaii with more kills than Washington now after starting off very rough. But another surface error. Well, Washington's way ahead on that note. They're, they've made seven. That's only the second error by Hawaii. They have three aces, so they're serving, out-serving Washington right now. This is what you have to do against this Washington team. Serve them tough. And the block is big. Wade and Van Zandt. You know, I like the way Van Zandt moved her feet, got right in the body line of the hitter. See how she moved in, gave her about eight feet of line. That's what you have to do as a blocker. See where they're going and get in front of them. Another huge block. Van Zant turns it in. Not going to let herself be She's used. She's touching everything. And that block again in the court. Point Huskies. So solid when they have time. Washington's bunches in the middle of the court. All three blockers are in the paint. And then they're going to swing to the outside. By swinging, I mean they turn and they run. They keep their arms very compact and get over the net quick. Outside. Van trying to chase it down. The kill from Clay Greeley, who's looking very strong tonight. Seven kills for her. Yeah, yeah. After a terrible start, she's come back.
Here's Van Sant. You're just hoping you don't, she doesn't crash into the referee stand or, or the anything cameraman else. or anything else like <laughs> yeah. that. Mendoza. Good serve. Nice pass, though. And Finau looks so strong and comfortable with Haley Nelson. Free ball to the Huskies. Back again. That's the way to like it. Boy, Nelson is a terminator. She is a terminator. She's having a great year, and it actually her average is going up. Right now, she's hitting 342 with 0 .82 blocks, and she's still improving. Now, what does it say about the Huskies that she's improving with a new setter? Well, you know, the new setter, remember, was she only had three setters. So she was over there setting a 5-1, getting twice as many reps as the normal setter. On the B squad in practice. On the, the B squad about. in practice. So she's ready. Jayfa now is putting up a very hittable ball. And, and Nelson particularly likes it. Her she back will, sets are beautiful. She will always remember she made her career start debut in the NCAA tournament. A little bit wide from Van Sant. Yeah, she was a little early on that one. Hawaii up by six. Out hitting. Out hitting Washington, 179 to 125 in the second set. And another service error, though. They've had three now. Three all aces. of them in this. Three errors. All of them in this set, yeah. those errors. Yeah. I would say that was really good, except it's 0 and 3 this second this set. set. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. A 1 to 1 ratio, wonderful. Oh, exactly. wow. Although I think actually they had two of the aces in this set. I look back oh, at their stat sheet. Okay. Okay. But meanwhile, a Washington helping them oh, out again Washington. with more errors. This is just incredible. Well, I haven't seen so many errors from Washington. This is my fifth game and I've covered Washington this season. I haven't seen them serve this badly before. You know what? There's a lot of freshmen out there. And it's the NCAA playoffs. Well, and there's a difference, too. We've talked all the time. Big block. Huge block. There's a difference between missing long and missing in the net. And oh, all yeah. these are in the net. Yeah, definitely. Got to give the other team a chance to play on it. Blockers up on this pipe. Left side blocker got over there. Boy, that was nice. That block so good. It's count for two. It was huge. Really serve is strong. Van Zandt so smart. Changes things up. So Belden. Three dig by Greeley. And back to Van Zandt as everything that Washington hits is being dug. That one dug out of bounds. Well, you know, I was watching Dave so Soji when he has our workout today. And he was showing him what position to get in when Van Zandt was hitting. And he was modeling. He was getting down to the defensive position. And uh, he still looks like he can play. He played for UCSB in the late uh, 60s. Yeah, he still paddle years. boards every day out in Hawaii, he'd said. He started out as a baseball player for the Gouges. Wound up playing volleyball. Look at Sabeldin frustrated there that she let that ball get past her. Yeah, well, that was a nice, nice jam because the center went up with two hands. Looked like she was going to set. See, when she keeps her right arm extended, she does give it away. I like the way Higgins is attacking. Hawaii built a seven-point lead early in this set and held it. Dave Shoji took this job when he was 28 years old. Yeah, he was coaching the men and women at the same time. Skimbray. Tags. Taylor and gets the point. Yeah, she is getting a ton of sets tonight. This is unusual. Yeah. I don't know how many sets she had, but she's been getting plenty of action. Cassie Strickland back to serve. Three receiver for Hawaii. That's a good toss. And look at Manuole Vau. Perfect pass. Indeed. Well, like I said, Scott Wong, the associate coach, was putting, putting a heavy jumper on Hawaii today in practice. So, if they can pass him, they can pass her. Damn, right? 
into the midline of her body, so she handled it pretty well. Strickland back to serve again. A big hole for Washington to try to dig out of in the set. Really nice pass again. Two consecutive great passes from Hawaii. And then Ana Oleval pushes it through the block. Really going in the seam there. And uh, Ana Oleval didn't have to get that tough seam shot. He really was very aggressive. Taylor Higgins played in almost every match last year. She's had a great season this year again. Chris Jones showing why you know she what? was missed. That's the first time I've seen her explode. She's had a very tentative approach, slow. A little early and slow. That time it was even fast. That's what she looked like before she sprained her ankle on November 21st. I bet you that felt like scratching an itch for her to come back and get one good win. That's the first time she's been ridden. Finau serves. Ball is touched. Point Hawaii as they march towards the end of the second set. You know, it, it's tough to come back from an egg spring because it hurts. You know, it doesn't hurt until you go off the court right. pretty much, you know, because the adrenaline's coming. But so you, you tend to go early and slow rather than make it fast like you used it. Ahakai, deep serve. Roll shot rejected. Rejected by Olivia McGill. Hanging out of that. Olivia McGill, 25th best blocker in the country, won by 3-7 box per set. And remember that this is McGill's old league in that she had played against these Washington players. It is now set point. Wahine. Nice cut shot. Not much room there. The block was up committing on it. Coming up at the end of the show, we're going to send you back to our Pac-12 Network studios with Jill Savage. She's going to take you through volleyball second round heights all around the country and, of course, talk about the Ducks football game. Back to Finau, to Nelson. Good transition. Lock controls it. And a kill as Van Zandt says, we're not done yet. Quick angle. See, that's her spot. It's The up blocker can't get deep enough, and the left back is too deep. She hits that spot so many times. It remains Hawaii set point. Too deep. Too deep. Outside to Van Zandt. And a pushing kill from Nikki Taylor will end the conversation for set number two. And these teams go into the break, tied up at one set apiece. You see how they streaked Van Sant at the end? Because that's when they needed the kill. She had three sets in a row. She got two kills in a row. Maybe a little bit too late to go to Van Sant as Hawaii went to Nikki Taylor. It's going to be an interesting one. We're tied up, one set apiece. to our San Francisco studios. I'm Bill Savage with your intermission report. After two sets, Washington and Hawaii have each taken one. We'll take you back out to Seattle shortly, but first, let's get caught up on other Pac-12 matches today. We start with Utah on the road, looking to knock off number 14, Nebraska. Third set, Utah down 2-0, but Shelby Dalton gets the kill, and the Utes take the third set. In the fourth, Utah up 23-17. Adora Anai with the huge kill against the Husker defense. And the Utes tie it at two sets apiece. Match point, Nebraska, Mary Paul Miller over the net for the final point. That ends Utah's comeback. Nebraska wins in five sets. Colorado taking on Colorado State in the second round. The Buffs down two sets to none early. We pick it up in the third. Colorado on the attack. Alexis Austin for the kill. And the Buffs take the third set. In the fourth, set point Colorado. Taylor Simpson beats the block for the kill. And the Buffs tie it at two set piece, forcing the fifth match point now for Colorado State. Austin's attack is blocked for the match point, and the Rams advance to the third round. 
We'll take you back out to Alaska Airlines Arena where they are tied up at one set apiece. But stay with us. Your sports report update is coming up next. Asian take you. Welcome back. I'm Jill Savage with your Sports Report update. Pac-12 championship game had a new home this year. The Wildcats and Ducks kicked things off in Levi Stadium for the first neutral site championship game. The Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year, Marcus Mariota, going up against the Pac-12 Coach of the Year in Rich Rodriguez. We pick it up in the second quarter. Oregon already up 13. Marcus Mariota sprints for the corner, gets the four-yard score. Oregon would be 20 to nothing at the half in the third quarter. Oregon up 30 to 7. Mariota rolls right, hits Darren Carrington the back of the end zone for the 11-yard score. Carrington had a career-high seven receptions for 126 yards, and Mariota in the third quarter kept it himself for the one-yard score. Oregon beat Arizona 51-13. They are the 2014 champs. That's what you get when you're the champ. The Gatorade bath. They are now going to move on to first ever college football playoff. Ashley Adamson and J.B. Long will have a full recap of that game on Monday night at 7 p.m. on Sports 4. They'll also be looking at soccer and volleyball, both of them in postseason play as well, plus the 12 best plays of the week. Don't go anywhere. We'll take you back out to campus next. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena split at 1-1 in this NCAA second round between Hawaii and Washington. Hi everybody, I'm Ann Marie Anderson alongside 21-time national championship coach Al Skates. And Al, what do you think? It was kind of tale of two different matches in those first two sets. Yeah, first set, Hawaii came out, tried shots they didn't have in their arsenal, made a whole bunch of unforced hitting errors. Second set, totally different. They out hit Washington, they challenged block, starting to hit some high flat ones into the block. Totally different. It looked completely different. Let's take a look at highlights and show you exactly what Al is talking about. We're going to see a whole lot of terminations here. One on one, the middles can put it away all night long for Washington. There's that solid Washington block. And Van Sant has gone on fire, but she's not enough to carry the load. Now that is a good hit, late and fast. And Hawaii's hitting that high fly one. That's going down the second set. They didn't have that shot the first set. And look at her turn line, Black. As you take a look at the numbers, maybe the most uh, daring one is the service errors. Yeah, Washington hasn't made this many serving errors in matches. And after two sets, they made eight already. So this is totally out of sync for them. Yeah, and in addition to that blocking number, eight and a half blocks for Washington to Hawaii's four. These are two very strong blocking teams, and she who blocks the best is going to have a real advantage in this match. Yeah, actually, Hawaii's leading them sixth in the nation. Washington is is uh, tenth in the nation. Two great blocking teams, you're right. Third set underway. Two blockers up against that quick set. I like it. And a crushing kill from the right. Nikki Taylor is in there trying to match up on Van Sant, and this time she'll get the blocker a few times, because Van Sant is now starting in the left front. We'd love to know what you think about this match. Join us on Twitter and join the conversation, hashtag H-A-W versus V-S-U-W. Lots of people talking about this matchup. This is the third time in the last five years that Hawaii has come to Seattle to face Washington in the second round. Washington won the first two times. Hawaii doesn't really care about history today. Well, they went five in 2012, so it was very close. That ball was blocked out of bounds. First time Van Sant saw Higgins all night. He hit it right at her and got a kill for the first kill of the set. That ball goes out of downs. Random, random hit off the left hand of the end blocker. Kakai serving for Hawaii. Hawaii out served him that second set. Finau pulled that out of the net. Yeah, that was nice. 
Sam McGill, and again, the connection doesn't look like what it well, had been. Well, what's happening, the set's too slow. McGill's up fast. She wants the ball high and fast, and the set's getting it to her a little low and slow. Now, she did get one kill on that low ball that was in her right armpit, but she's not going to be able to do that all night long. They've been setting all year. Taylor Higgins was the backup to Uyato, who was a three-year starter in years past. Higgins been setting all season. That that wasn't high enough either. She can't hit down. She can't hit angles. She she jumps 10-5. She needs the ball about 10 feet in the air. Two feet up in that. Sabellin, meanwhile, gets up and puts it down. Sabellin so gets that high lob set, and uh, she can turn it. Here she comes. Look at a long approach. She gets behind three meter line, gets up ahead of steam. Perfect pass. Danger of speed as Tanner sends it Van Zant. Hit it. S scrambled. Van Bam. Slam, oh, she but it is dug by Mendoza. Mendoza got in the sweet spot that time. Again, Mendoza is the one who dug with her foot in the first know, set. But that time she was really there. That's fantastic defense and converting offense from Hawaii. Really hitting it off the end blocker on a Mendoza dig. And Chrissy Jones is that end blocker for Washington. And a good one. She's blocking point eight a set. Perfect pass. Mendoza's Mendoza. been doing a great job. I know it. Back to Van Zandt. Give it to her. Too low again. Darn it. These middle hitters for Hawaii are getting frustrated. Last that was just tip high. She's just got to. She's just got to let it go high and fast. Because her hitters are there. Ball got behind Kakai and Adolfo's putting it in play. Mendoza, perfect set. And back to her again, gives another great set behind her. I like the way Greeley's hitting up into the box. She, she tried that low hard one for a while, that wasn't working. Now she's hitting smarter. Sarah Mendoza doing a great job defensively for Hawaii and has set that ball to really. Chrissy Jones getting up in the air again. Oh, third kill. Beautiful from Higgins. Higgins has three for three. Now she's picking her spots well. She's getting kill set so far. Hawaii running a 5-1 offense, meaning the setter at one point is up front. Washington running a 6-2, always having three her setters never yeah, front court. Three big uh, people a hit at all times for Washington. Big, big hitters uh, here, though, a big server for Washington back, Cassie Strickland. Yeah, but she's been so erratic tonight on her cross, she hasn't been effective. She needs the footfall once. Toss it in front of the line. There she is, eight feet behind the net again. She's got the yips. She's, you know, she's serving the ball 37 feet to the net sometimes. She should be serving the ball from 26, 27 feet from the net. But she's so tentative on her toss, I have never seen this way before. Al, I know you play golf, and in golf occasionally people will get the yips and just won't be able to get her swing back. Right now she served four errors. Is there a similarity to a degree between her serving them and golfing? Well, that is your rhythm is it's a lot better than my golfing yips at this point. <laughs> but she, she, she's such an athlete, she can turn this around. I think, I think, you know, she, she put far more in her football for three years. She played linebacker, quarterback. I think she needs to just go for it. She's just, instead of being tentative, just take a big toss into the court and go broad jump and hit it hard. That is one of the things that that Jim McGuffin sold her on the Laurel position, saying, look, you were a middle linebacker in Pop Warren. It's the same idea. You can read. You can take that That's first right. step. And so there's a lot of similarities yeah. to be drawn, including yeah. the toughness. Yeah, she can uh, she can pretty much go wherever she wants to back there. They clear it out for Jade Fee now back to serve. Beautiful serve to the deep corner. 
Manole Val. Oh! Does tag the line! It looked like a shut duck. She just puts a little on that one, but she placed it beautifully. I mean, it was, you know, a, a set behind her shoulder, so she went 45 feet to the corner, which is a good choice. Katana Ponce back to serve for Hawaii. Serving specialist from Oahu. Well, everybody's from the islands, just to talk. And a use of the block. As well, Washington's a one-point lead. Going right after the setter. Taylor Higgins at 5'9", is a, is a good blocker, but not a big blocker. But her timing has to be very good, particularly against Van Sant. Strickland digs, it's sent out to Van Sant. Absolutely tags Mendoza, but again, Hawaii converts the defense. Well, Mendoza is in the spot she needs to be in. That's three balls that have hit her. That one she dug up the chest, one she dug off her foot, and one she just dug perfectly. But she's leaning her up very well now. So that begs the question, this, why is Van Zandt hitting it somewhere she's not? Well, she just figures she's going to hit that. She's looking at the block. Mm -hmm. And she's hitting where the block isn't. And she hit hard enough, so she's usually not dug anyway. But I saw Dave Soji going over this shot. They had Scott Wong hitting that same shot today in their practice. Mendoza just put her helmet on and got right in the spot and has had a lot of success. Beautiful change of pace. Picked up, though. And again, kill the back line. Nikki Taylor. That is such a strange swing by Nikki Taylor. That's behind her. And she's hitting that corner with it. She's running under it. I don't know if she can see the block. She has to look up at this of the wall. Yeah. Kaylee Nelson being quiet, then assassin. Well, Greeley has to come in and, and get that. She was nowhere near Nelson. She stayed out by the antenna. And Nelson's approaching body line cross court, so she's got to move her feet. Seven kills, just one error for Kaylee Nelson as she rotates out. Big block from Washington it's again, cover. Because it's high hit, they can cover up. Oh, sharp angle, but Greeley was waiting for it. Doug out of bounds. Yeah, Greeley was right straddling that that uh, three meter line. Okay, here it is. Nice cover, and here's the dig. Beautiful dig, stationary. Get that ball up. No touch on that one. That ball's out. Three-point lead for the Huskies. And that's enough for Dave Shoji to take a timeout, try to slow the roll. Shoji talking to Taylor, telling her to challenge the block, get it in. Three-point lead for the Husky. Why he may need to adjust. NCAA Tournament Volleyball is presented by Tashikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. Welcome back to Seattle's second round of NCAA Volleyball at the University of Washington. They are the highest seed in this uh, the Seattle Regional. Hawaii and Washington split one set piece. This is the second, or the, sorry, this is the third set. Well, all the hitters Washington has on the court right now are doing a good job. Courtney Swan started out real slow, became one of the Pun sisters during the second set. They yanked her, and uh, everybody else is hitting really well right now. They're hitting over 400. Chrissy Jones is who came in when Swan went out, and she just had a roof block there, starting to have impact. Yeah, she's getting her confidence back out with a sprained ankle, and uh, starting to come in and really explode like she used to. Yeah, Chrissy Jones had been a starter all season. Sprained her ankle four matches before the end of the regular season. Missed those four, and there she just crushed 
on her kill. Well, never join with her arm. Yeah. <laughs> she, she had a real slow approach and just crushed it. She's expecting that set to be a little closer. She only played a little bit last night against New Hampshire in the third set. Coach been testing her out this week. Had her on a jump count earlier this week. Look at that set. But Van Zandt hits it up. Beautiful set, though. Gassy Strickland running backwards, sets the ball 25 feet right on the net. You see how verbal Cassie Strickland is with her team telling him Zan on one side, Sambre on the other, what they need. See how Hawaii's moving the ball around. Now they're serving Van Sant. Somebody gets a groove, they're going to try somebody else. Van Sant serves. Big block, but again, Hawaii covering the block consistently. Mendoza having a day as their libero. Some digging going on out here tonight. Big rally, and again, and Nikki Taylor killing it. She likes that deep corner. She's hitting that ball 30 feet in the air and getting some kills. She has 12 kills, in fact, leads all hitters on either team. Most of them are from the left to the other corner. But that one was from the right to the corner. Tries to serve Scambray and ends up served wide as Cassie Strickland goes to the back line again. Not sure what to expect. Okay, Cassie, let's see if she can toss the ball over the line like she was doing last night. She was serving well. Pretty good toss this time. Mendoza passes it perfectly. And another dig from Mendoza. Back to Jones. Beautiful. Travel set. cross court. Oh, now that is the way to set the ball high and fast to your quick hitter. See, the back slide was beautiful. But the front sets to the quick hitters are low and slow. Not only did she get a kill, but she got Cassie Strickland off the back line, never knowing when she's going to get on and, that right, roll. And she made her first good toss of the night and yep. really banged it. And Washington now out, looking like they're trying to hit hard and harder to a degree, and uh, Scambray with another error there. Yeah, it's, it's early enough. They just need, Hawaii needs a few, few serves to get back in this game, but they want it, they're down five. They want to get a side out right here. So that set worked twice in a row, that back slide. So Higgins is feeling very comfortable setting that ball. Yep, and Kalea Adolfo rotates out as Ponce comes in to serve. Again, it is Scambray, Strickland, and Van Zandt receiving. They serve Scambray for much of the night. Then you pointed out they served Van Zandt a couple of times. We'll see Ponce does. Goes after the freshman, Scambray. Finau, wow. Tough angle, sends it across. Yeah. Well, the digger was coming in with a short dink, went long. So the middle back has too far to go to chase that one down. Well, Jade McGill Fina. comes in and she gets most of her sets in the front. She's only hitting 154. She likes the gap set and the one set. Here comes gap. That was pretty good gap set, but the blockers were there in that bunch. Manuel Val laid out for it. Finau has such a nice touch on the ball. Uh-oh. Van Dan didn't hit that shot when it, she's... She's trying a different angle. Yeah. Strickland digs it. Pac-12 libero of the year. She's hitting it into the block. McGill's been there every turn. Trying to change it up, and McGill so happy she closes it down. McGill had two controls, and then she got the stuff on the third Van Zandt hit. That's her so happy face. By the way, she's smart to not celebrate. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh...
We used to celebrate him by shouting in the hitter's face, but those days are long over. Yeah, red, red card for that. It's not recommended to shout in the reigning national player of the year's face because Kristen Vizant could make you pay. And she just might do it anyway. Like that. Yeah. I love watching in the old days that Karaj Karai play against the Cubans because they used to scream at each other through the net. It was pretty entertaining. Oh my gosh. See, when McGill's late like that, Zansan hits into her, there's no way she can get the ball. Yeah, two-time Pac-12 player of the year, Chris Van Sant. Yeah, she rotated the corner and came up with that one. Oh! The block is huge, and now they're celebrating Hawaii, trying to dig back. They're back with the four. Well, I'm saying she's going to go short cross court again to Mendoza. She's been avoiding that, hitting right into the block the last four swings. Hawaii McGill. showing why they're sixth in the nation in blocks. Miguel's a force up there. She's had a lot of controls. This is only her second rotation across the front. And she's had two controls and two stops. A lot of conversation up front for Washington. Sabeldon, Van Dant, and Chrissy Jones. But Van Sant has plenty of good hitters surrounding her, and they're doing the job. Outside. Kalei Gurley gets the use. No, it, it no. was blocked back into her, and it bounced off her shoulder. Came back down on the side. Yeah, so it's going to go right off her left shoulder there. Hawaii will take a time out as Washington enjoys six-point lead. Yeah, they've held their own, but they got behind early, and they haven't been able to narrow the gap. We're going to look at that block again. If we can get the net cam going here. Hands over the net, and oh, right off her hitting arm. I saw it that time. I thought it hit her off the shoulder. Right under Patsy Maltz's referee's exam, and she saw that pretty clearly. The blocking advantage to Washington is huge. 11 and a half blocks to Hawaii 6. Yes, now 6 is not good enough against this team. Because this team is hitting above 300. Washington's hitting above 300 for the season. And they're approaching that right now. They're hitting 275 in the third set. So they're up in their hitting. Even though they're slowing Van Sant down, they're not controlling the rest of the hitters right now. It's hard to control this Washington team at all. In fact, the Pac-12 players of the year littered with Washington Huskies. Uh, libero of the year, Cassie Strickland. And she does a lot of things well. I love her sets time. And two-time player of the year, Vance Ann, Pac-12 player of the year. Now that's Miguel. a high set. That was a big set for Miguel that time. But the, the middle blocker was committing on her. So Elvin. And so Ginger Long is going to come in in place of Kalei Greeley for Hawaii. Long is going to be back in the passing rotation alongside Mano Leval and Mendoza. They go to Oleval. Well, Greeley goes out with 31 sets and only hitting 0-6-5. Seven errors and nine kills. But she's been hitting a lot of zeros, so Dave Soji is going to set her down for a while. Yeah, first set went to Ginger Long, and she got blocked. So he's given up this set, is what he's doing. He's resting a couple of starters. Yeah, he's brought McGill in Maglio as well. Yeah. Maglio in number 19. I mean, I've done that a lot. Then they, they sit down, they come back, renew the next set. And so is now set point for Washington. And a service error again for Washington. Well, it's not a good serving night, but the hitting and the blocking is coming along. They're holding Hawaii hitting 158 in this set. 
They're blocking well. Their hitting's getting better. They're getting momentum. Nice pass from Strickland to Belden, try and put it away. And on the hitting air, Washington takes set three. They lead this match two sets to one. Well, playing at home, they're getting comfortable now. Wise is going to have to turn this around. They can't get ahead early in the fourth set. And so a few Hawaii airs combined with some big Washington blocks gave the Huskies two sets to one lead. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Washington up over Hawaii, two sets to one as we head into the fourth set. Great crowd here tonight. Looks like there's about 8,000. It hasn't been announced yet, but you know, the Wahi have played before 10,250 people in the San Sheriff Center too. So they're used to big crowds also. They probably had 8,000 there this year at some point. Yeah, I know. So here's the stats. It's, uh, oh my goodness, Hawaii's only hitting 103 now for the night. So that last set. They only hit 70. The big block of Washington is doing the job. They're getting a lot. Washington's getting a lot of control blocks where they're getting easy digs and then getting great passes where the setter can get, take any option she wants. And then then transition, they're getting one-on-one -on -one situations. So I think the block of Washington is really doing some damage to this offense of Hawaii. Plus the middles, Miguel just hasn't been able to get the set she wants on a consistent basis. They need to get her fired up and go to her when they can. When you talk about these Washington fans, by the way, over 50,000 fans came here to Alaska Airlines Arena to see the Huskies play. That's a record for this team. That's awesome. Van Sant, big swing, and starts off set number four with a kill. Yeah, they've been controlling Van Sant at the end of the uh, third set. But she starts out, and you can't control her all that long. It's just not going to happen. They had her all the way down to 200, which is really low for her. Middle, McGill shut down as Nelson and Wade Did are in front of her. you see how slow that set was? McGill was up in the air, available, ready. By the time the set got there, she was on the way down, and the block was well formed. Sambray serving. And uh, it's got to be a record for them. Washington now with 11 service errors, no aces. Yeah, this is amazing. Amazing. And again, we point out a different kind of error. These are in the net errors, right. and there's a difference. There is. That's a nice serve. Good rotation by the Greeley in the middle back. Free ball to the Huskies. Perfect pass from Strickland. They go to Wade. And Moses throws it up there beautifully. High off hands is time on Olebao. That was a smart hit. Beautiful. Dave Shoji calls her dynamic, quick twitch, and points out that she had never been asked to play all the way around before she got to Hawaii a couple of years ago. You know, and last night, Duke served her uh, a lot. She had three service early receptions, I mean, passing receptions. But tonight's passing well. Yeah, passing very well. And Hawaii, very much in this match, they need to have energy and get up early in this set. Look at that extension. That's a nice pancake there. But couldn't control it. Look at that pass. Beautiful pass. Ball is long. Sambray knows it and let it go. Huskies. I mean, anytime you make a diving pass and get a ball an inch off the hardwood and get it up in the air, it's a pretty nice pass. Look at that. Tough serve. Melanie Wade took the service line last night against New Hampshire when it was 2-2 and served 15 consecutive points. Middle, McGill, dug by Finau. Outside, offhand, Scambray pops it up. And Van Zandt tries to put it down. I'll tell you, Fina is quick on her feet. She got over on that bad pass and came to a dead stop before she set the ball just a moment ago. She can move. 
She looks terrific. Dade Finau, a redshirt freshman out of Maryville, Washington. Had not played since September before going into that Washington State match and had not started a match ever as a college athlete Look at that until dig. yesterday. One hand. <laughs> Perfect dig by Finau. Oh, good off block. And then moves up, puts up a great set for Krista Van Zandt. Popped over, it's Messi. Wow, Perez came up with a great block recovery to keep that ball alive and get a point for Hawaii. Kahakai comes back in to serve for the Wahine. She was injured much of the summer and just got cleared to play the first week of September. He now sets the middle. Miguel slid it down. I think she's now setting a lot better tonight than she said last night. I think it was hard for them to get in a rhythm last night, don't you think, against I mean, New Hampshire? Yeah, I thought last night she was setting back really well, but everything's right on the money right now. All his set. And again, it's worth mentioning again Jim McLaughlin's conversation with us about his setters. As we asked him, with Beals being out, he said... Finau got plenty of reps during the her, his practices on the B side. Yeah, he likes having three setters. Then the other setter can just set constantly running a 5-1. He sees a lot of 5-1 anyway, so he scrimmage against a 5-1. Mendoza, meanwhile, back to serve for Hawaii in a must-win set. Perfect pass. And Sabeldin just chops at it. She had two blockers on her. The middle block had guessed right. And trailed her all the way over there. All right. So, little instruction to the front line blockers. Yep. Jim McLaughlin coach. whispering to Tanner. Tanner relaying it to the front court. And Strickland now. Passes. Chrissy Jones is dug. And a huge block for the Huskies. We welcome those of you who just watched Stanford advance to the Sweet 16 with a win over Michigan State. We are in Seattle in Alaska Airlines Arena. I'm Amory Anderson alongside Al Skates. And we are in set number four, Washington, up two sets to one. The big block of Washington is starting to wear down the Wahine hitters. And they are a formidable block tonight. Hard-fought match in Palo Alto. As Michigan State fought hard, the Wahine have been fighting hard here as well, but Washington with the advantage. Okay, Cassie Strickland back to serve. She's been a little erratic tonight. It all depends on that toss. She gets back. She wants to take a four-step approach, jump over the inline. That's a good toss. She brings it. Yep, she's had four Overpass. errors, and there is going to be her first kill conversion, I'd say, because it doesn't count an ace, but it was created by her. Yes. Now, that's, let's see if she can get two good tosses in a row. Dave says she doesn't want to see two good tosses in a row. Calls a timeout. Dave shows she's not going to allow the other good toss that Cassie Strickland had was also followed by a timeout, and Hawaii converted it. Can they do it again? We'll see after the break. Oakland was begins with K. Welcome back. Cassie Strickland on the back line, serving for the Huskies, who lead by five. Her last serve was maybe her best of the night. Yeah, she, she finally tossed it over the end line, and that's an overpass, and, and uh, Chrissy Jones was happy to see that one. That's a kill. Cassie Strickland has had four errors tonight as she struggled to find some consistency in her toss. Yeah, well, she had a great toss. She needs to toss it over the end line, jump into the court from behind the line. Pretty good toss. But she did the smart thing. She didn't hit it as hard as she could because it still needed to be tossed a few feet closer to the net. And then frustrated with herself for not making that dig as she was down line. 
That was a pretty good hit. Adolph been a starter all four years for this Hawaii team. Loves going off a one foot and just had senior day. Her last match played in Stan Harrop Center. Perfect pass. Tanner, go back to Chrissy Jones. And that backslide that they run so well. Problem is it's right into Washington's block because they're all bunched in the middle. That was a really nice backcourt set for Hawaii. Strickland lays it out and Van Zant from that court. Chrissy Jones lays it, but they can't chase it. A good effort by Washington point for the Wahine. Cassie Strickland time for a right hand layout roundhouse over the net. Very difficult. Good right hand dig on that ball. And here comes another one, off blocker. Here comes the right-handed roundhouse. That's the only way she could have got it back. Tight, tight pass. Well handled by Tanner, set outside to Scambry. Scambry's hit pretty well. She's a freshman. She's the weakest outside hitter, but she does everything else so well. She's pretty indispensable to Washington. And her hitting is getting better and better. She's up to 233 for the season. She's getting a lot of swings tonight. And as Tanner goes out, Finau comes in. Tanner just made a great set of a ball that was tight to the net. She's been their second setter all season long in this 6-2. Patsy Malta says that ball's her, down. I mentioned this last night. Tor Tanner, her daddy, with 1988 Olympic gold medalist for the U.S. team. And he ran T Street Club. And Washington has these starters, Tanner, Strickland, Jones, and Stambay from the club he coached. There you go. But the pipeline is shut. He's now the head coach of the Pepperdine women. So I guess he'll have to find a new club to recruit from. Oh, hey, great coverage, self-coverage. Looking for the touch, not going to get it. Oleva covered her own spot. That's the best way to do it if you can. Now, watch Oleva. He comes up with it, gets two hands on it. Very coordinated. What to do that. great body control from Tom Manuel Tough pass. And they're frozen as the ball goes off a Higgins. Nobody moves. Melanie Way getting over there and putting the clamps on. Two big middle blockers. He's 6'4", junior from Palo Alto. <laughs> Looks like she had a that. touch to me, but I guess not. Bye -bye. Just sends it wide, and again, that same connection they've been looking for all match long, a low set. Miguel going out, and uh, we got a new middle blocker in Maglio. There. Maglio, 6-2 freshman. Yeah, Maglio came in in that last set when it looked like Dave Soji was conceding the set. Not sure what the adjustment is now as another Hawaii error and Washington is now building a significant lead. Oh boy, they decide out right now. Time out, Dave Soji. Why he are going to talk this over. They need to come back as after this timeout. It's the same timeout. This is it. They have to suck it up here and really come back, hold their heads up high. Look like they're winning. They win this game. They know they can win the match. They win the set. Well, we know you're enjoying volleyball, but basketball is underway as well. And tomorrow, don't miss another second of Pac-12 men's basketball with a triple hair right here on Pac-12 Networks at 2 o'clock Utah State versus USC. 4 o'clock San Diego and UCLA are at 6 o'clock. 13th ranked San Diego State and Washington. Log on to pack-12.com for original programming information. Live triple header coverage beginning at 2 on Pac-12 Networks and Pac-12 now. Well, the block of Washington is just dominating the Wahine in this fourth set. They, they've had eight hitting errors and only seven kills. They're hitting minus, obviously. And uh, 
they just have to get some kills to get back in his match get back in this set oh it's the end of the season for him right here that's right and the dogs in the dance washington's tournament history 19 ncaa tournament appearances and really the biggest thing for washington is they want to play next weekend in their own regional they're hosting so they attend to come back here. They're trying to make a run all the way to the national championship for the first time since 2005. And they're the third seeded team in the tournament. And uh, they're going to have this place packed. In the next round, there won't be any seats left. The winner of this match will play Nebraska, who beat Utah in a very tough five-set match earlier today. A beautiful set by Strickland. Strickland back again to Van Zandt. Van Zandt over the block down the line. Well, that was a nice shot. That was a very nice shot. It's so difficult to hit over the block and keep it in. Usually if you're hitting high flat, you get a piece of the block. It's much easier. Again, trying to run that wide slide. Finau, Van Zandt, you said they're going to go to her at the end. They are doing that. When they need those kills, Manuela Mao sends it wide. Yeah, just too many hitting errors. Substitution. She's going out. And so Megan in Huff comes in. She's yeah. uh, listed as a middle locker, but really she's an outside hitter, right side hitter mostly. She's done a little bit of everything. Hop is a freshman out of Washington, Federal Way. Two sport athlete, volleyball and basketball. Well, she's on the left side. Now she's going to be a left side hitter. There's only two hits in the front court. And they haven't been putting the ball away out of the back court at all. So look for Greeley to hit a pipe here. She's in the middle back. Here, ball is here. long and call your own number. I like that go. Very nice set. These Ds are just too far away from the net. Strickland puts up a good dig and oh. then makes an incredible dig following it. Pac-12 libero of the year for a reason. It's put Passing away. Passing Strickland. Her hands are so quick. She was coming in there, hands waist high. She got him up in front of her face. Good layout. That was perfect pass. There, there's <laughs> the one I'm talking about right there. Ball straight down. She hits it up. That's a 12 best nominee for sure. Defensive effort by Cassie Strickland. Well, you put them together. That's a two-play sequence for her. And now a huge lead for Washington. The Wahine trying to find a way to beat Washington on their home floor. It's the third time in five years that they've been in this position in the second round. Boy, Van Sant is just mixing it up. She's seen so many different shots now. She was all cross-court angle to start the match, and she was starting to get done. And then since then, she's just been hitting different shots every time. Christian Van Sant came into this match looking to be well, looking for a win, but she became the Washington all-time career kills leader, passing Crystal Morrison, and then added on 19 kills total today so far. Yeah, she uh, she's going to have a lot more kills before this tournament is over. Hawaii had her down hitting 200 during the third set at some point. Now she's back up to 259 and rising. In the middle, to Belden, dug by Mendoza. Mendoza's having a great night. Mendoza has been phenomenal all day, as has Nikki Taylor. Nice cut and kill. 15 kills for Taylor. Taylor, Taylor has 15 digs also, but Mendoza has 29 digs. Back. Ball wide, no touch, point Huskies. Wow, 34 errors for the Huskies tonight, and only 47 kills. I mean, for the Wahinis, excuse me. Bailey Tanner back to serve. Sends that ball 
Pretty deep. Strictly perfect pass. And then Zan just slams it down. Boy, she sees that block so well. There's a seam there, she buries it. That's when she hits it straight now. And there was a seam. Her vision is fantastic because she keeps them in front of her. She can see the block. And again, 20 kills for Van Zant. Oh, very nice hit. For Hawaii, they're in the 22nd consecutive NCAA tournament. But they are had a rough time in this fourth set. Just tell Krista Van Zandt now having a great time. Yeah, yeah, she's approaching 300, and she usually hits over 300. Ball is sent long. All that adrenaline transferred, and now what is it about Krista Van Zandt's attacking that makes her special? She keeps the ball in front of her, even on the real high sets where most hitters will run under it. And when they run under it, they're looking up at the ceiling. They can't see to look at the ball. They can't see the block. She always sees the block. And when there's a seam between the blockers, she buries it right low seam. But when the block's solid, she has that wrist away shot inside the middle blocker. And tonight, she showed she has deep line. She has all the shots. That's, that's why she's so tough. So Belden tries to change up her speed. Van Zant handles this one. Tanner goes back to Belden. He puts it away. And it is match point Huskies. And look who's on the service line for Washington as they are trying to get to the round of 16. And Kathy Strickland loves this pressure. Well, she's going to hit it hard. We know that. Good toss. Bam. And a nice pass from Kai Kai. Good big by Cassie. This bag set. Oh, the hitter is inside. And a messy play right now as Jin Long sends it long. And off, Washington. Off the top of the block. Off the top of the block. Wink Wahinis. Washington touches it. And Wahine stays alive. But barely. It remains match point. Fans on their feet. The pass is wild. And Van Zandt changes her speed, puts it down. Washington advances to the round of 16. Fans standing, giving the dog a standing ovation here. For the third time in the last five years, Washington has sent Hawaii home from the NCAA tournament. Well, it was a blocking clinic by Washington tonight. They were just terrific on their block. They didn't serve as well as they usually did. They didn't hit aces tonight like they usually did, but their hitting and blocking dominated this match. The Wahine really dug well, but you can't win against this kind of opponent by digging unless you can terminate those digs. And they just made too many hitting errors tonight. And they could not challenge the block, could not get the kills they needed to. After 10 teams got into the NBA tournament, five Pac-12 teams are advancing to the round of 16. Well, some of them are going to start running into each other here pretty soon. I know OSU is going to play Stanford. Uh, where is that one? Oregon State, Stanford, UCLA has advanced by sweeping Long Beach State. Oregon beat LSU. And, of course, Washington will face Nebraska next week. Yeah, here. yeah. So five teams from the Pac-12 still alive. A record 10 teams from the Pac-12 got into this tournament. That's never happened before. So that's a first. Last year we had nine teams from the Pac-12 into the tournament. So the Pac-12 has won seven out of the last 13 NCAA championships. The last team to do it was UCLA in 2011. 
Right now, Penn State's been the one winning the last five out of seven NCAA championships. And Russ Rose is another good club this year. Penn State's advancing. This weekend for Washington answered a lot of questions. They wanted to know how they would look without Katie Mills. The answer is very good as Washington takes down Hawaii and sends them home. Defending home court, Washington will host the regional here next week for Al Gates and our Pac-12 crew. I'm Ann Marie Anson saying so long from Seattle. Thanks for joining us as the Huskies advance to the Rep 16.